everyone. I am Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today is a very special day. Today is May the 4th, which, if you don't know, is Star Wars Day. And during May, it is the May. See? We Mandalorian there? Mm-hmm. It is the May for us to paint some Star Wars stuff. <laughs> so we're going to do the child... Uh, Many of us call Baby Yoda, though uh, canon-wise, we're not really sure if this is the child of Yoda and Yaddle. And oh yeah, it is that deep for those of us around here. <laughs> on the mic is my husband, John. Hello. He absolutely is over on the dark side because he feels like the dark side has cooked. So. Dude, I'm te- Team Ewok <sighs> all the way from birth. <laughs> he is. So this is fan art, and I'm going to show you step by step how you can paint this for yourself to celebrate the holiday. If you check the link below, you will get a link to our website where there's a free traceable. You can use it as a coloring page or as a way to transfer. We have instructions uh, in a video. If you search the Art Sherpa How to Trace, you'll see two videos on how to transfer images on your canvas, and they go as deep as you want to go. So uh, I'm going to demonstrate how to trans uh, to how to draw this on the paper but if you don't want to draw i've got you covered with that traceable and you can use that and not worry how is everyone feeling in this holiday this is really? the first 2021 may the 4th and yeah. i i didn't even do may the 4th on 2020 because it was just to the fifth <sighs> two way of the fifth all 2021 20. i'm gonna have to come over there and do some stunt handsing because i uh didn't realize the watercolor palette before we went. So I'm going to make some okay. adjustments. All right? Make the adjustments that you need to make. He is going to move the palette. Just so we can see. So that you can see. Birds. And he's going to make me small in a minute so you yeah. can see everything I'm doing. I think that's probably I'm going to explain every part of this. You've got your traceable. Um, this is okay? watercolor, but if you paint acrylic with me, you can do this in acrylic too on watercolor paper. A lot of times you can paint a very watery technique with acrylic on watercolor paper in much the same way you can with watercolor. Just very similar stuff. I see Deborah Pivot in the live. She says, hi, everyone from Idaho. Baby Yoda has brought us uh, for a beautiful springtime. May the force, oops, the fourth be with you. I love it. You guys have been amazing. I've loved celebrating this holiday with you so much. Those of you that were uh, on my personal Facebook page, there is a cookie there of baby John, Mm -hmm. young John, as a handmade Ewok. Because back when we were young and Star Wars came out, they didn't have the merch. No. There was very little merch. So your mom had to hand make your costumes, and his mom did. She hand made his costumes. So you can check that out. Uh, Heather C. says, the Target Starbucks near me had a special secret menu for today. I had a dark side frappuccino. Heather, I needed to know that. I needed to go to Starbucks. It's it's okay. I'm pretty caffeinated in the morning. So this is a 140-pound watercolor paper. I am using Strathmore uh, today, 140-pound watercolor paper, and it's on a block, which means all the edges are glued together, and I like that because it helps prevent some of the warping and wafting. Um, It was brought up in comments uh, last live stream that you could also use a tape to tape a regular watercolor pad, all the sides together, all the sheets together, so that you could get a similar effect if you wanted a different paper or had um, some budget limitations. Today on colors, we're going to be using some opera pink, some transparent pyro orange, uh, quinacridone gold, phthalo green, a little phthalo blue. I don't feel like I got any quinacridone magenta, but I did get into Payne's gray and ultramarine blue, nickel azo yellow, and a little Hansi yellow. We're also going to be using some white acrylic. Now, this one I'm demonstrating I always use. But I also always want you to understand that while I think this stuff is really cool, you can also use white craft paint in the bottle, especially for what we're doing here. Though I like this one because it's just so pigmented, so heavy and pigmented. You could also use a white jelly pen like we have in the past. I'm also going to use a little Tombow ABT. This is a brush and black marker. I'm just using a, a nice black marker that is waterproof and does not bleed into the paper which some Sharpies will do. So there's a lot of room on that. So this is technically then multimedia. What do you guys think about that? Pretty 
Cool. Christy Motzinger says she saw the costume and it was awesome. Now, we have some people watching on YouTube and we have some people watching on Facebook. So, hey, everybody on Facebook. I hope you're having fun there, too. I appreciate you guys so much. We're going to commit to keeping these streams just going, going, going. So you guys can have free art education as you need it. Now, I'm going to take a cool tool. This is called a T-square. It's a ruler that lets me make straight lines, really, basically. And I'm going to give myself a little bit of a wall. Now, do you guys remember Kilroy from, like, the 80s? Mm -hmm. The little little dude that you could draw. And then there was also a bunch of big-eyed kids that were playing uh, peekaboo on walls as well that were big-eyed in walls. And so this is kind of, this is a little inspired from that aesthetic. I, like, realized it when I was doing it. I was like, oh, I'm calling back to those big-eyed kids. Now, again, I'm going to draw this in very lightly. I'm using a graphite uh, watercolor pencil. So it's like a pencil pencil, but that's also watercolor. It has a watercolor binder in it. Fantastic. It erases, it blends, it does everything a pencil does. And it's a watercolor pencil. So it does all the things. This one is by Creticolor. I like them. They're a very cool company. You could use an HP pencil, though. If you need these materials listed out again, if you check the description, they're all written out there. So you can find them easily as well. Amy says, hey, Facebook peeps. Uh, and John, John, what color would your lightsaber? Oh, actually, they were they were asking what color would yours be first. Mine? Was, yeah. Oh my god, I don't know. Let's let's do a thing here. If we know that, uh, this is a nine by twelve pad of paper, right? So the halfway point between nine by twelve, let's say here, is here. So I start kind of like my nose here. This just sort of helps me going to go a little bit up from the bottom and make the tiniest little round, lightest little ball. And then a bit of a nostril coming out and a bit of a nostril coming out. And again, if you don't want to draw, no problem. There's a traceable. Now, I definitely want to have some big ears. So I'm going to come either side and make kind of like a little defining mark because I want enough room for eyes and I want enough room for ears. Mm. So we're going to come right to the nose and we're going to go up. We're going to really exaggerate these eyes, if that's okay. I know many of you do not enjoy getting the other eye, and I did a really good explanation of the other eye on my rainbow dripping eye tutorial, but I think I'm going to make a whole separate tip video on how to draw the other eye, because it's just, it's just such a challenge when you're not familiar with it. Remember, eyes can be sisters. They don't have to be twins. They should be sisters that look a lot alike. They need to be like Baldwin's, right? But they don't need to be um, the girls from family, from Full House. God, what were they? The Olsen twins. They need to be the Baldwin's, but not the Olsen twins. Linda Sue says um, mine would be black. There we go. That will help. I don't know. I feel like your mom is actually probably, uh, remember the guy that, that was like, you couldn't use the force on him? Uh, I think that's your mom's superpower. <laughs> <laughs> you just couldn't use the force on her. There's no use of the force. She's like, no, that doesn't work on me. <laughs> Go back, Jedi, and try again. You're grounded. So we have two nice little big eyes here. Very baby Yoda. The top of the head, then, I'm going to do kind of very low. I'm going to do a very low profile of the head, right over the top. And I'm going to want the ears to kind of end on both sides over here. So I give myself a little stopping point. And at the top of that arc of the eyes, where I'm going to arc the ear. That's how I do that. Arc that ear over there. Similar thing here. But I like to come back when I come from the left. Now she's using. Oh, sorry. Doo -doo -doo -doo. What? Uh, so there's a good question here. Um, mm. Kim's using a ten by ten canvas. Mm -hmm. Where would you suggest she put that line? So on your ten by ten, I would do that on the lower third of your canvas, and then I would start his face in the center, and just to make sure, because I have a twelve here, so you're you're kind of coming in. You'd have to make him just a little bit smaller, so he centers out a little bit better. In the you would just shrink his overall size down because your canvas would be a little bit small. And then we're going to bring these two little ears back here. So he's just beautifully centered in there. And then what's great about his little ears is I can come right here and bring this little inside bit. His ears are not dissimilar. 
Two R's. You know, if you if you watch The Mandalorian, which which I super did, because we 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 go big, big into The Mandalorian. Well, all right, we. I and my son. My husband was not. <laughs> my husband came in and was like, "What is this?" But if you watched it, the child was kind of brutal, man. Like he ate some lady's whole family, and he he's like definitely carnivore. Like I think their species like comes to its center itself. I don't think they start out. <laughs> the truth to them is maybe they're like a super rav in his species because he, hmm. he's super cute though. And also he could like absolutely wipe something out. So this is what we're going to get in. I then may want to take a chance to just sort of draw in with my pencil a little bit an understanding of where the black part of the eyes will be just so I can make sure I have those about even before I get any of my darker ink or pen work in here. All right, we want to get that in now so we know that they're kind of even now. And that way I can be sure that when I'm getting down here with the other colors that I've got that nice space and I can pull those lines down. Um, let me see chat. I see uh, Alan is in the house and uh, I see Allison Muller saying Chewy would be an awesome watercolor. He absolutely will. And actually I'm doing a bunch of uh, Star Wars and the patrons just because I had done two Yoda designs. And the second one, Baby Yoda Designs, the second one is going to the patrons to match the other one that I did. And then I realized, you know, I should do an Ewok, and then I should do a Chewy. And then I was like, you know, <laughs> I can just do a bunch of these in the Patreon age. So they're gonna get a they're gonna get a grip of them. Now oh, I have here. Thank you, Christine, for all the stars. Oh, thank you for the stars, Christine. Thank you. So we have him here. We've got him lightly sketched in or transferred in. And here's what I want you to understand about the pencil here. When I come in with a wet brush, you can see that it, it definitely softens and becomes like watercolor. I'm going to get this brush wet. This is a number eight round in watercolor. Actually, I'm not going to do the voyage. I'm going to do my uh, regular number eight round. It's a number eight round in watercolor. The actual brush is a black velvet. You could use this or an Escoda, um, one of the Raphael soft aquas. You just want a nice round that comes to a good point that isn't going to fight you. And we're going to start with the ears. Now, I want to put out some fresh watercolor, some fresh, fresh watercolor. So I'm going to take a little bit of my opera pink. That's lovely. And I'm going to take a little bit of my transparent pyro orange. This is in the Daniel Smith line. You can get the Daniel Smith really easily at my if you were looking for it because sometimes it can be a little challenging to find you can I don't think you can get the core at Michael's in store but you can get it online easily so uh, either one of those and I had promised that I would be demonstrating where did my good yellow go I had it out like the other day the other day I had it out and now I cannot see its thing um, while I'm here, I'm going to... I don't know what thing you're looking for. My, my nickel ozo yellow. I have some oh. on palette, but I just wanted to add some more. That's a, out. that's a thing. But now it cannot see it. I think that that's the color of lightsaber you would have. Yeah, that is the color. I, I have all the quinacridone gold deep you could ever want. So I guess I'm going to have to use it from this wet pad and try to find it later. Do we go find some? You can look through here and see if you can read one, but I'll pull this out. This is nickel ozo yellow. Thank it's you, a little Rebecca. bit like... And, oh, and of course, once I start to pull it out, then I see it. I'm using the core in this. It's so it's, bad. It's the threat of me coming over. It was. It just panicked. It just couldn't handle it. And it was like, no. And I'll go ahead and put some quinacridone gold deep out here, too, that I can mess with the green. This is like an alternate to um, certain burnt siennas and things. See, most people don't know the Fonz was a force user. The Fonz absolutely was a force user. Right up until he jumped the shark. I went to the dark side. That's just so. <laughs> Actually, I disagree with that whole thing. The Jump the Shark episode was a good episode. <laughs> oh, I want to make sure I show you how to get the hand into before I go too far. So I'm going to take a little bit inside, just on this side of his ear. I'm going to come over and make a bump. I find it's easier to do the center finger first. And you oh. want to make sure you kind of taper it down for claw. And then a little bit of a shorter pinky over this way. And then a little bit of a shorter little 
kind of indoor finger that way. So that's how you would get the beginning of his hand. And now we can go. So I'm going to take some yellow very lightly and I'm going to wash inside his ear with this little bit of light yellow to begin with. Just the inside. This is how we're going to get the pinking of his ear. It's really fun to get. So for this to work, if you're new to watercolor painting, you're going to want your paper to be somewhat wet, not soaked, but somewhat wet for the next part. I'm going to take a little of my pink and my orange together. And this is how I get the interior of the ear color going. And I'm going to come here, and you can see when you paint wet into wet, it diffuses the color. Then I can wipe off even my brush onto my watercolor paper. And you can see how it, with a gentle wash, you still always have a little pigment in there. Come back with a little brighter yellow. Uh, there's some talk of an R2-D2 humidifier. Humidifiers can help you in your studio. Um, keep control of how your paint is drying and how quickly it dries. I like to take the little yellow and pink area and kind of work those together and let them blend in. Then we're going to come pull out a little of our green and a lot of our yellow and kind of very gently mix those together and get a very bright green that we're going to work in the inside of the ear. All right. It's good, doesn't it? And it's going to continue to soften and blend out. Now, one of the things that I do, and it's a subtle little difference, um, is I will bring a little bit of this pink up the inside lip of the ear. And I may tap out a few little spots of it on his ear. And those will soften. And those will look like little cute discolorations, little, little freckles. If you have a question for me, put your question all in caps. It does help us see it on a busy chat. All right, we're going to come here and wet this out. I hope everyone is having a really good day. This is Everyone is loving this. I'm over here in chat with folks right now. And we're just talking about all sorts of So John is taking stuff. care of the Facebook folks in chat, and then I've got the YouTube folks in chat. Folksy folks. And I kind of wet it over here. Let's get the yellow going in the ear. Light yellow everywhere. That looks good. Nice little beginning color. And we're going to mix a little of our orange and our pink again. A little more to the pink. If you're painting Crayola or you have some artist loft and you see me or just really anyone painting watercolor and you see me using a bright pink, just scan your watercolors real quick and grab your closest pink. It will be good enough. It will be okay. All right? Grab your closest orange. Grab your closest color, your best guess. Yeah, you might have slightly different colors, but with watercolor, it's a little different than acrylic in that it's a bit more forgiving. 140-pound <laughs> cold paper, I, cold press paper I do prefer. Ian says, paint or paint not. There is no try. Ian, you make me happy in my heart. In my heart. <laughs> uh, now, is that, uh, I'm going to guess that um, it's Ian Jackson, is yes. or is that Ian Garland? That's Ian Jackson over on because Facebook. Both the Ians we know are Star Wars fans, so either one could show up, and they're both YouTubers. Uh, Ian, Ian Jackson, uh, that's I'm correct, right? Not uh, like, yeah, it is. I'm, I'm just having a sleepy time. So Ian Jackson, um, he has been a longtime friend and uh, has come to a lot of shows, and uh, we've had a lot of Ewok theory discussions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he understands what dangerous, dangerous beings Ewoks are and how they have to be watched because they are, well, they're like little, little Hannibals. Little Hannibal Lecters is what they are. Jar Jar may be annoying, but the Ewoks you got to watch out for. I'm going to come here and sort of tap my brush up and down, and this gives us that, some of that little, you know, um, 
a regular color on the ear and then I'll rinse out. I'll get back into my pink and orange. Uh, Darcy says, my Sherpa, I have a plastic statue of a grown Yoda. I'm wondering if Senelier paints will work. Yes. But you will want to go to the hardware store and you're going to want to get a spray primer. I think Rust-Oleum makes it that's to prep your plastics for paint. I did a bunch of my daughter's playhouses with my mom and we did that and it kept the paint from flaking off. It kept the paint from bubbling. It was such a worthwhile step. And, and the can was not not even that much money. So it's the one that would like prep plastic lawn furniture or um, outdoor uh, objects for painting. It just works really good to prep your plastics to take acrylic paint. And then like whenever I watch like the upcycles of the squishies with my daughter, you know how they, they redo squishies or dolls. I'm always like, no, don't do I have a better way. I know a better thing. <laughs> no, <laughs> but it would be rude to, but I don't ever leave those comments cause I'm polite, but it's just sometimes there's a product that just makes it so much easier, easier and prevents the fail. <laughs> Ian Garland showed up. He's like, my ears were burning. Someone's just talking Ian about Ian Garland. Me. Now, Ian Garland is also, a, now he is definitely on the on the good side of the force. He's definitely rebel. He's not dark side like John. He also has a YouTube I'm, channel. He does quilts, but he, he like, he loves who all right, all right, and let's, Star Wars. Let's very get this good straight. Man. I, much like Mace Windu, favor the, the side of the light, but have no problem using dark dark side force powers when fighting. So, no, you have argued how the empire is unjustly. Just, oh no, I think the empire totally had the right thing I'm going get on here. The underside of his eye wet. Well, John says ridiculous things. <laughs> yes, we're gonna leave it to the rebels who had no plan, nothing to replace it. They're just gonna wipe it all out and leave this chaos in its place. They want to throw away the. Dem the democratically yeah. elected and created system. Underside with Nico Ozzo yellow. I'm just going to say. Just. Rebels be well, rebelling. John under undermines. <laughs> rebels be rebelling. Rebels are good. Uh, they got no plan. Well. You they know. Sh they show up and they're like, we want to destroy all the millions of people in your spaceship with no repercussions. I'm not saying that there isn't a weird point there, <laughs> but I still don't like it. <laughs> still don't like it. So while the eyes are still wet <laughs> and I still don't like it, I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of my orange loaded up on my brush. Kind of come under here. And let that kind of bloom out. And it will bloom out just a little bit where it's still wet. It only works if it's still wet. And then I'm going to go ahead and get a little of, oh, there's my burnt umber. I'll get a little bit of my quinacridone gold burnt umber. It's all fine. Just your brown. And I'll get a little bit of black into that brown, which is my Payne's gray. I use Payne's gray for my black on my palette. And I'm going to come around to the outside. These are not fluorescent paints, are they? No, no. These are just regular paints. Opera pink looks a little fluorescent, but it is not a fluorescent color. It's a very traditional color in watercolor paint. You can <laughs> find it in most watercolor line palettes. Like, that's one of the reasons why I was like, that was the fun color I could throw in here that you guys had a good chance of finding. You know, I, I'm going to agree. I'm going to take what Suzanne said and take it a little further. And that is, um, I think that, uh, this little baby Yoda looks sort of like a shaved and hardened feathered gizmo. He's like they just he's just an old wrinkly version of a cute fuzzy happy gremlin. Remember gizmo? Yeah. <laughs> he looked like a shaved version of him. Oh, well, I, I feel baby Yoda and gizmo have some very similar design features <laughs> as an artist. <laughs> If I had made Gizmo, I'd be all up and mad right now. Mm -hmm. I would be, but I'm not that artist. So I don't have to worry about the moral repercussions of the decisions that they made. But maybe they came from the same planet. They're I don't cousins. think the artist will feel that. Who knows? 
I'm going to come here and just kind of make sure that I take a few of these like little lines. I'm going to bring some lines. I'm going to be careful with them. Got to be careful. A baby Yoda will eat all of your sentient eggs after darkness. Baby Yoda might do that. I'm going to just bring a little bit. These are sort of like little strides of lines that are coming around. You know, and we're going to glaze over this so it's okay if it's, you know, if you need to come in and soften it, you can. This is just a kind of a damp brush. Just fuzzing that up. Now, the nose, I really want to keep as light as I can keep on the ball and the top. I'm going to go ahead and paint that in right now. Mm -hmm. I know I'm going to come back with some white as well, but I just want to make sure that this is in his face is the light green. Ooh. So even as I pull it up, I'm pulling color away from it to keep it the light green. We're going to come in and we're going to start him out with just the light Yoda green. That's the light Yoda green? Which is the phthalo green and a little nickel ozo yellow making kind of a light, light green. I may pre-wet some of this so that it kind of stays soft and blooms out. I want these initial moments of color to be quite soft. Keep it all light, man. Yeah. Up his ear. His ear, you know, can be a little bit darker than his face. So if you pick up a little bit more pigment on that, that's not a problem. <laughs> Thank you, Heather. Thank you, Heather. Uh, Alan says, you can't paint gizmo in watercolor. Yeah, I can paint gizmo in watercolor. Don't you talk crazy. Go back to, before you put the green down uh -huh. and go watch a video of cinnamons on fur and then just do that. And that's gizmo. <laughs> yeah, Same really dude. Yeah. Gizmo, baby, the child. I don't know. Maybe it's a ch that. Maybe they have that look right before they turn. Maybe <laughs> gremlins, that weird thing. That's a that's a whole rearing that that species. I, this oh. is the force using version of that species. Well, yeah, but what if like when they're really little, like this baby was like fifty. But what if when they're like really oh, they're little, cute and furry. You're cute and furry, but you ha they're on a special feeding schedule. And if you go like left, they turn into that other thing. You don't even want to see that. I think this is old. an alternative fan fiction you have just erupted. I I think I did. I don't want to get in trouble for it, but yeah. Well, I'm this is take this a little whole... bit of my phthalo green and a little of my quinacridone gold and some yellow. We're just kind of creating some green golds here. And our Ewoks, the ones that didn't make the full transition? Ewok is a uh, parallel evolution. <laughs> like, you know how there's crustification? That's right. Yeah, it's just everything makes a crab. In the Star Wars universe, everything makes an Ewok. That's just the basic evolutionary path. Ewokification? Ewokification. <laughs> everything, it's, it's, go it's better than the alternative. With the which is the Jar Jar Binksification of things. No, that was that is a singular evolutionary run, and it was not successful. The universe said no. You know, if you go back and watch <gasps> and go, Jar Jar is actually a Sith Lord from the start, and rewatch it and go, <gasps> look, I okay, this is not <laughs> politics. This is just humanity. I'm gonna say that right now. Cancel culture. I'm not generally for it, but I have to say, whenever I see Jar Jar, I was like, where was cancel culture when it would have been useful for all of us? What? You, I don't know. I mean, you know it would have helped. He, he, I don't know. It, it, it was a unique No politics. Character. I'm just saying that need, outside of our personal I, ideologies, there's this whole like, I'll never do it again. You know how we are as humans. Yeah. I'm just saying, where was that when Jar Jar happened? Mm, Jar Jar yeah. needed some of that. That needed to get shut down and in, in, in pitch. So 
I'm going to kind of wet around his eye. I don't want hard lines. And you'll notice that when we wet around an area, we can uh, soften anything up. And I'm being very careful to not take out his light, light nose. I don't want to take out his light, light nose. I'll take out his light, light nose. Applying a little bit of my phthalo green and my ozo, nickel ozo yellow together. If you go back and look at Jar Jar mm -hmm. as having an agenda from the very beginning, he takes on a whole different character turn. Oh, yeah, no, he's super. Sorry, kid. If this was not mistakes, but intentional I selection. I think it was mistakes. I, I do. I, I love Lucas, but I, I just think that that was, that was a tired late night pitch decision. <laughs> I don't know. All right, so on his hand... uh. Amy says George Lucas says it was his favorite character because everyone hated him. Amy, I kind of understand. I love it. Lucas, but I think that might be a clue into why he was single for so long. <laughs> that right there. <laughs> That's a tough sell on a personality profile. <laughs> you know why I liked him? Because it made everybody mad. Oh, okay. That'll not have any backlash at all. I'm pre-wetting the little hand. That way I can come in with a little bit of my green. Make sure it's green. I wanted to make sure that the ear was amply dry before painting the green in the hand. Amply dry. Yeah. So watercolor goes where the water is. So if you're if an area, not to use the word so. Have you ever tried to train yourself out of a verbal how crutch? Do you, how do you have ample dryness? That's like dry. you have an abundance of a lack of something. That's right. An abundance you of a broke lack my of science something. brain. You can have an abundance of a lack of something. Hello, void. There's an abundance of it, and it's a lack of something. That's not. That's completely a lack. I don't know. I don't know. I love you so much. I don't know about that. You brought me treaties today, and you're my favorite. You brought me all that stuff back from Michaels. So I love you. All right. So here on the tip of his fingers, here. On the tip of his fingers, I'm going to take my quinacridone gold. You know, and just you. What quinacridone gold is just a really fancy, pretty, transparent kind of burnt sienna. Mix is a little different, but essentially it's the same. So if what you have in your watercolor palette is burnt sienna, you're good. I'm going to come back with a rinsed out brush. I rinse it out. I dry it on my paper. And then I kind of come back and use the tip. Can you see how that blends? I do. So that's how you sort of do a blending. This is the blending in the watercolor, this is where I control the blend. Control the blend. Control the universe. So, I did it. All right. If I say so, uh, throw up one of the emojis. Every time I do it, then I'm going to go back, and I'm going to read it, and I'm going to know to stop it. I, I have teenagers, and now I'm caught into some vocal affectations that I cannot get out of. What are you talking about? I keep saying so. So what? I would throw my brush at you, but it's the only number eight I have over here that I want to use, so I'm not going to throw my brush at you. Right now, I'm going to go above the baby Yoda's head while this is drying, because this is all dry now. This and this is dry enough for this. And I'm going to wet a section of paper, not all the paper above his head, but a section across the ear, above the head, over and across the ear a bit. And the reason I do that is that I want to have ample room want to have ample room. I was waiting for you to say some <laughs> ample room. So what? <sighs> oh, I know why I did it. Even though sometimes I question my judgment now. I'm going to grab my phthalo blue. This is my phthalo blue from the core. Now, because this is core watercolor, Ooh. it's going to really bloom out heavily. See how it's just traveling through all the wet space and kind of Travels. making little flowers? You know That's what it is? It's a blues traveler. It is a blues traveler. And sometimes I will use extra blue, and sometimes I will use lighter blue, and I definitely want to come close to his head. You're jumping, dancing around there. You dance around. You just bring the little blue, and you the paper needs to be wet. Where it's dry, you can see it isn't blooming. I've got to wet the paper if I want it to bloom out. If it's not blooming, it's not blooming. Then you need more. Oh, there it is. 
then there isn't enough water. If your watercolor isn't doing this, it doesn't have enough flow agent in it. You can get a, nope, not that product. You can get a product called, this is the, e this type is the easiest to get. The two kind I had, I am, I'm having trouble finding. It was my favorite. Uh, but you can get this liquid kind and it's Oxgall, O-X-G-A-L-L, -L, Oxgall, get it from any brand. About eight drops to four to six ounces of water. Not in your lungs. Don't put in a spray bottle for any reason. Not for breathing. You don't want a surfacant in your lungs, but it will allow your watercolors that aren't blooming to do the bloom. So you don't have to go buy a whole new set of watercolors. If you want to do this and just you're like, look, I got these artist lofts and I don't want to buy anything new. You can do that. Um, I think there's a weird, I haven't tested it, a weird Dawn soap pack. It does a similar thing. It's about breaking the surface tension of the water. Now, we talked last time about how I know which way the color is going to go. If I put it here, I know it's going to kind of travel out that way into this little circle. If I come here, I know it's going to go up. And that's just about where the paint can travel in the water. Uh huh. You know, and you get a sense of it. You can play with your uh, blooming a few times. And you'll pretty quickly learn. You're like, oh, you know, if I go, if I wet everything and I start at the edge, it's going to travel this way. Come get a bunch of it. And you can see it at work there. If I travel the edge, it's going to fill in that way because the water pulls it out. Another thing that you can do to kind of help this is kind of splatter a little bit to the edge. If you can control that and not get that on his little face, that can be a nice little... What you can do with him. Mm. Kind of make it seem like the sky is sparkling up. At this point, the wall is dry enough for you to make the wall color, which is an ultramarine blue and a Payne's gray. And the wall starts out gray. And we're going to get it real wet and make it drippy. How's that sound? Looks initially? nice. Wet and drippy. So fun in the watercolor. Now, if you're a very organized, structured person who has alphabetized their spice cabinet and other <laughs> things, you may find dripping and splattering not fun. And guess what? That's okay. This is painting time. And you don't have to uh, make art be different for you or you to be different for art. Art can be what you need it to be. So if you don't enjoy the drips or the splatters, there's no need for you to do that. You can do it if you want to, but you don't have to. I'm making little drippy drips mm -hmm. because I want the wall to feel a little kind of artful. I'm just bringing a little bit of water through there and it'll travel down. I'm going to tap it. Let gravity get it. Gravity knows what it wants. Oh, that came out well. Real good right now. Gravity wants to unify the universe. Gravity works. I can get a little bit of my quinacridone gold and gray. And we can even. Loosely, while everything is wet, put in some stone shapes, which are just little irregular round shapes. Irregular round Irregular. shapes. Irregular. Sometimes they bloom and sometimes they don't, and that is okay because it is a loose stone wall. Just make an irregular round shape. Like an amoeba that isn't really eating anything right now. Someone was saying they're going to write on the wall, Rebel Scum. Oh, in graffiti. <laughs> yeah. uh, you can mix watercolor and acrylic or acrylic and gouache. So if you want to do that kind of layering, that's pretty easy to do. 
Um, you just want to make sure that your watercolor goes on first and it's dry before you layer either the gouache or the acrylic. Huh. All right. Heather C says like and subscribe. Yes, please follow the page. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. We are going to be back next Wednesday at our uh, usual watercolor Wednesday time. Uh, I think we're doing either a rainbow bunny or splashy bird. This is going to be a big, big one for lots of grandkids and oh, kids. Oh, yeah. No, I I was like, I need to get one out there because we have, we have loved ones to paint for. Loved ones to paint for. She's doing pretty good here. I'm going to want to come in and kind of get to my green and a little bit of my quinacridone gold. You can see that gets me a nicer, darker little space. I'm going to come along his eye neatly because I'm polite. You can bring a little bit, I can squeeze it right here, kind of pull down the tear duct a bit into the nose. Mm -hmm. Getting some shading. Come under his nose, a little bit of green and gold. Once I get that kind of on there, I can come back. Under a little noses, sometimes we have little shadows. That helps us have our little nose. Yeah. We'll grab a little more green and gold. Now here up top, I'm going to come along a little bit wet, and I'll soften through here just to make sure there's a nice blend. And I'm going to really get into my quinacridone gold and green. Mm -hmm. This is dry now. And I'm going to come from this wet area up into the sky with this green and gold. On the toe of my brush, and I'm making little tiny baby Yoda hairs. Oh, uh, yeah. He's not quite a full Maui, but he's having his moment. You're having your moments, too. Man, it's been just like, so, anyone notice there's like a TV desert going on, and I am like holding on to like the new stuff is starting. I mean, I'm like, Melissa I'm had just a pretty watching good... the dregs, like the dregs right now of shows. Melissa's got a pretty good question here. All right, Melissa, let's I answer your good question. Um, I was just gifted a palette like you're using. How do you, do you clean the flat inner surface or do you keep it dirty? So, <laughs> I'm not supposed to say so. That's why I had to. you can do either. This paint, as it dries, can be reactivated and used. It will be just as bright, just as useful. And when I'm not teaching a class, I tend to just keep my palette dirty because I'll be like, oh, that's a great little color. Oh, that's a great little color. And I get back into it. If you're doing a project where you need a very different palette than the one you used last, or if you're filming a class and you need to have a clean enough palette for people to be able to follow along, you'll have to wipe it back. But for the most part, you don't have to clean it. However, the man that made this Tom Lynch palette, he, oh, so particular. So it's really about that experience you want to have in your art. Uh, there's a watercolor video called the, I think it's called the Three Amigos, mm -hmm. and it's these really famous Australian watercolorists. And I mean, they get into each other's like messy palettes, and they're like, I don't know what color is this. Let's find out. <laughs> and painted something brilliant. So I'm going to be working on that all week. Mm. Now that I've said I wanted to change it, of course I <laughs> cannot change it. Wow. What did I do? What did you do? That looks so good know. now that I'm gonna it's coming together. I'm going to bring a little darker arc over his eye very gently. Darker arc over his eye and down towards the nose. I like to come out here a little bit.
A little bit of his nose defined there. Mm -hmm. I can get the hand wet again and kind of come up and bloom and glaze at the same time, which is sort of nice. But I don't take it all the way up to the top of the hand. Mm -mm -mm. I just Oops. put some coloration on his skin. I just was on, looking at the wrong screen there. Were you looking at the wrong screen? His eyes are looking pretty okay. They are looking pretty okay. I'm going to get my burnt umber and my phenacridone gold and get a pretty good load. Come here to this outer edge of eye. And come under the lid and into the tear duct with this color. Now is time to do the Payne's Gray. I'm not going to pre-wet the eye because I want some control over where any of this goes. I come under the lid. You see, you got that mess there. And up over. Very carefully filling this in. A little extra shadow there. I can take the eye. Actually, create little radials out. Uh -huh. While it's still wet. And we'll give ourselves a little beginning of this gradation on the eye that I did in the original. Same thing, far eye. Lots of gray. Look, come over the lid. Yeah, when we can get a close up. Uh. And this is, we're really hoping this will dry. I probably should do some splatters now on it if I want splattering for the stonework. Um, that way it can be dry by the time I want to do my pen work. I'm going to do some black lining and some uh, ink, uh, water inking, as well as some acrylic. You have to, okay, I got Katie. That was Katie's. I got Katie's question. Lots of great tips on the palette, like how to do the palette, like turning it upside down, all kinds of things. Heather was asking if you uh, ever sell your artwork, and if so, where? Sometimes we have um, two kinds of sales. We have... Early patron sales, because we build up a lot of work and we, we let the patrons um, get an opportunity to buy that, and those are closed patron sales. And then every once in a while, we'll put a small collection on the website for a limited amount of time. Generally, as quickly as they can be purchased, because they don't last very long. They don't last very long. And what they generally are are studies that we are uh, of lessons. So I will do studies of the lessons that I'm going to teach. Like this one has a study. And so it could have, um, it could be for sale on the website. However, oftentimes with the watercolors, those become, um, I do giveaways for the patrons of original art, and so that might go into the giveaway. Sometimes we do a big community giveaway where we give away coloring books and things that we make like soap or kids or spa stuff or washcloths and I will give away two original pieces of art in that as well. Very often watercolor. Yep. I'm going to grab a lot of my quinacridone kind of in the underside here. Oh. Yeah, just a little bit of I'm going to really darken that to darken it. And come back and lighten that with a little bit of water on the far sides. Extra little coat here. And then where it's slightly wet, I can add some more striations which will soften on the outside out there. Uh, 
come to the tip of the nails. Give a little bit of shadow color. Don't want it too wet on the brush. Little shadow under his fingers just to help those fingers stay somewhat. Um, I'm going to grab some stone colors like my quinacridone gold and I'm going to load them up pretty wet on the brush and splatter my stone a bit. I'm using the other <laughs> to make a mask. You could use a scratch sheet of paper. You know, if you have any like paintings that don't work out, I kind of keep them around. You can use them as masks. I'm going to do some Payne's gray. It's just a way to help splatter up. You'll see me change directions to make sure I'm not making an implied line with my splatter. The watercolor won't bleed through, so it's fine to do. But what I'm going to do next, so I'm letting all this have a dry, let's go ahead and get his head wet again because we want a little bit of a bleed or softening. Mm -hmm. I'm going to grab a little of my green and some of my nickel ozo uh, yellow. Dang. Make a second cute little line of hairs but because they're into the wet here they'll like diffuse a bit into his head which I like <sighs> Amy's got this I agree Amy you got this you got anything in life Amy you can do it sometimes I'll see everyone like encouraging each other I'm like yes can. I like to flick my brush and kind of make it random so that they look like actual hairs how this gets soft and diffuses again is that pre-wetting and it's going to continue to soften and then if you want it to soften further you just rinse out your brush and very carefully kind of come here and just touch and see it's just going to continue to blend and bleed in and, and not be crazy little hairs oh yeah on his on his face Got a little green here little lid that I can work out for him. If you need any more green on his ears or any place, it's a good time to get it. Thought his ears could be a little more green up here. Mm -hmm. Having a deep enough, lush enough color. He's looking pretty good. For anything else to happen on him, I really need him to be dry. To dry. You at home who are not doing a YouTube show can just allow your paper to dry and settle and develop and be in control. I'm who, in a little bit of a rush. I'm going to use my hair dryer. Are you going to use mm -hmm. a hair dryer? It doesn't hurt anything. It just won't. It'll speed up the drying and the, the paint won't soak into the paper, which is where some of the softening happens. Well, I'll hit that mute button then. Okay. And so, for those of you who just have to paint with us, I appreciate it. I love having you guys here. It is my favorite, favorite thing. We really appreciate it. And, um, yeah, guys, this is, like, I have to say, one of the more fun paintings that we've done in just a short while because, you know, the watercolor Jedi-ness. So it's nice talking with you guys. Nice seeing everybody out here. And, uh, yeah, just time for me to talk because I don't know what to talk about during these breaks because I never prepare anything. And there's, like, a whole new website that you guys can see. If you go, uh, we're going to launch it soon. Right now, it's hidden, wink, wink, at bigartquest.com. You can see that's the new website thing that we're working on. Um it will be available here pretty soon for you guys to actually use, but it's functioning. So I was talking about stuff.
You can always talk about stuff. I didn't know what stuff to talk about, so I just rambled on. I love it when you ramble. Ramble anytime you want, babe. There we go. There we go. So, <laughs> I have been cursed by a witch. But it's okay. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to literally start going, um, just to break it. <laughs> This is so not my said. usual speech deviation. One, Amy, I hope you feel better. I scrolled up the chat to see how you're doing, and I hope you catch us later, and I hope you feel better. Um, oh, Patty, I'm seeing a lot of love to Patty because they had a beloved uh, furry companion cross the Rainbow Bridge, and I just want to send a lot of love your direction. And then also I noticed a question about gouache. Yeah, there are two types of gouache. There's an acrylic gouache. And there is a traditional gouache, which is related to watercolor. It just has a different binder, but it's water soluble and it can be lifted and it can layer. It's very opaque and it can be done in thin layers, but unlike acrylic, it's not like dry, dry forever. Hmm? I think Gallagher had a gouache. Gallagher might have had a gouache. I prefer the old school style. I do not like acrylic gouache. I don't get the point of it because it's acrylic gouache. So you're just matte acrylic. This is where I'm at, and honestly, I've had some very weird and uncomfortable conversations with materials companies going, that's different. And then Holbein said that theirs was maybe liftable again. I haven't had a chance to test that reality, but I really like old world gouache very much. I love it. It's fun to work with. It works really well with watercolor. It, it, it can be challenging to blend and do certain techniques with, but it's really beautiful in painting. It has a lot in common with acrylic in that it can be very opaque and very dry. You can do some similar techniques. And I like both of them, but I like the old school. Just to say. However, probably acrylic wash is more practical. Most people. I'll begin with white. Let's, nope, I'll begin with pen. That'll be the easiest. So the first thing I'm going to do with pen, and again, this is a Tombow. It doesn't have to be a Tombow. I'm going to draw a little line. How do you define my wall? Wall, how you doing? And Wall says, I'm okay. I'm just holding things up, waiting for some graffiti. I'm going to also add little implied stones. You can use uh, your little wash stones if you want to as a guide. Just remember to do a regular shape, and it's nice to fit uh, interesting pieces together. Take them all the way down and too far to the sides. It's just wanting to kind of imply a little bit of wall. A okay. little wall. A little wall. We're going to come under his nose. Just dry. I'm just trying to find those little nostrils there. Mm -hmm. A little bit back here. I go tap, tap, tap. I go tap, tap, tap. I'm going to add a little bit of a... Um, white, like... Uh, Acrylic there, mm -hmm. up over the eye. Just kind of come in under the eye. Over the eye. Under the eye. Let's do a little detailing on his little hand. Oh, hand. It says, yes. I'm like, I'm going to add a little bit of lining to you. All right, if you think so. So that's not too bad, you know, of things that you can do to get a little bit of that on there. And then I'm going to take my white acrylic. Again, you can use a bottle craft paint. I didn't say so. You didn't? Didn't. Oh, good. I'm going to put a little bit out. It'll peel right off my porcelain palette. And I'm going to use, this is an ultra round. You just want a long pointed brush that you have some control over. And I'm going to get a bit of my paint onto the brush. I'm going to come here on the nose. And I work a little bit up the nose. A little bit of these little reflecties. Maybe up the bridge. Just a bit. Gives them a little bit of a, a little bit of a cute, hot, little cutie, cutie, nosy 
Rosie there. I'm coming with a little of my white here. I could have used brisket to reserve this as well. But I actually like coming back with the pink. Lining the top of his lid. Lining the top of his lid. Now I'm gonna get this all rinsed out. This is a little this brush is a little pointed sometimes to do dots. Yeah. So I've got to kind of be careful to get the dots out. Ooh. Again, you could use gouache here, that would be fine. Second little dot. Kind of nice to have. Kind of nice to have. And then, you know, you can put some little kind of in the eye as wet lines. Yeah. His eyes are wet. Like bringing along the lower lid and then a little kind of tap to the outer side to start to apply it. Just little reflections for the moisture in the eye. A little bit on the inside here. I don't sign in pen. I do sign in brush. That's just a preference of mine. Uh, it's not right or wrong. It's just what I prefer. I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of this blue over here and kind of load up into my brush. So I have a nice point. And then I'm going to. Oh, yeah. Play with the shape. When you're finished with this, you can buy a frame and a mat and you put it behind glass. Yes, there are varnishes now, but that's a really new product. Mostly watercolors frame their work but behind glass, um, when you're measuring for a frame, you can measure to the mat. So it'll be an 11 by 14 mat. Then you need to look on the package to see what it says the cut opening is. So a lot of times it has a smaller opening that's also a standard size. And, uh, 9 by 12, I don't remember what its traditional mat is, but it's like 3 inches on the outer barrier generally. And then that will fit into another standard size frame. Often you can buy these in packages at craft stores for 50 to 75% off. And if you're willing to do like neutral colors, that's really easy to do. If you really love the piece, you can take your work to have it. That's, that's why you go to a framer often is for paperwork. And they will do a beautiful job putting it behind glass. And they will mat it and frame it and do that. And the difference is, and I'll tell you from my own personal experience, I, we had a devastating fire uh, years ago when my now 16-year-old was a baby, so I guess like 16 years ago, we had burned the whole house down while we were away Christmas Eve. Thankfully, we were away Christmas Eve because it all went down fast. Fire department came. There was just a few walls left. There were some original works of watercolor by Henri Touton that I had managed to get in my life that I was so excited about. Had them done at a professional framer they survive. So that is what the professional framing is for. <laughs> it, the way that they were framed, they were so sealed, they were so protected from the environment. The paper backing was done so well, the glass work was done so well, everything was fit so perfectly that literally they survived it. The frame looked terrible, but the work inside survived. Mm -hmm. And I would say that's the difference between framing it yourself and taking it to a framer. And so when you're thinking about, should I spend this money on framing, think, well, if the house were on fire, what would I like to have the most chance of surviving? <laughs> and that's where I would spend that money. And then if you're kind of like, ah, if I had to repaint it, I would be okay. Then you do a framing it yourself. If that makes sense about how to decide where to go with the framing. Yeah. 
Is it possible to use glazing liquids with acrylics so they can be layered to appear more like oil? Absolutely. Yes, it is absolutely. Uh, you may eventually lean more into products called retarders, which are a uh, agent that totally will not dry, and so you have to add that in very specific amounts or the painting won't ever dry if you really, really want to get the oil look, but I've never really had to get past my gloss glazing liquid. I have everything and I like this because it's so forgiving. And if I can just tint or glaze or layer over in such transparent lines. So I would say this gives you exactly the look of oils and you don't have to worry about it, especially with a soft blending brush. All right. So this is the child for Star Wars Day. May the fourth be with you. I'm so glad there are so many Star Wars fans. If you need more and you want more, the Patreon watercolor that's coming up is this little guy right here. You can sign up for that um, either over my YouTube channel, the Art Sherpa, or on our website. The cool thing about our website is you can sign up for uh, anything from five to 35, but all levels, we, we, we're just making it all in one patronage now. Like whatever level you sign up at there from five to 35, is all the things. If you go over to the YouTube channel, they don't let me do that. So it's like $15 and then you get all the things, but emojis too. Whatever works for you, whatever's right for you, but whatever it is you sign up, it's now all for one. We're just going to musketeer this thing, mostly for my sanity, because trying to deliver levels makes me crazy. Whereas just giving you guys everything and then you decide what patronage works for your budget works best for me. And then guess what? You don't have to patron at all. You can just show up and share a video and like and comment and subscribe. And that's the free patronage, which is just as appreciated by us. So if you think this is a great video and you want to help us out, but it's coronavirus time and you're like, that's not really in my budget, just share it everywhere. Just like it. Just leave a comment. Just put it on Pinterest when you finish it. Put it on Instagram, any of that stuff. We consider that a patronage too. And we don't just say that as a platitude because think about marketing companies. How much do they pay? to get you guys to talk about something. Mm -hmm. So that's real patronage. In my mind and heart, I think that's functionally and factually true. So however you do that, if you love this video, share it. If you want that painting and other paintings like it, come by. It's all good, whatever's right for you. We're not like, I don't know, it's just, just do what's good for you. Everything helps us as long, you know, as long as, and don't forget to subscribe because we're gonna paint next week. Either birds or rainbow bunny, I've done both. Yeah. They're both really cute. And you'll get to paint both of them. I just don't know what I'm putting up first. Probably Rainbow, Rainbow Bunny because my daughter wants the pillow. <laughs> I'm going to make a pillow of it. <sighs> Guys, this was a lot of fun. Do take care of yourself. It really matters what we do out there. It counts. You count. You matter. And so do the things that you need to do to be okay. Be good to each other because we're all going through this together. And I want to see you at a watercolor pad really soon. Bye-bye.